Art and Culture. Unit 11. On Stage. Love, Hate, Death. These things are at the heart of Shakespeare's famous tragedy, Romeo and Juliet. The St. Stephen's High School Drama Club performed this play last weekend. Romeo and Juliet is the story of two families, the Capulets and the Montagues, who are bitter enemies. Tragedy follows when the son of one falls in love with the daughter of the other. The play is set in Verona, Italy, in the late 16th century. Alison Bourne played Juliet, Capulet's beautiful young daughter. She showed the mixed emotions Juliet felt after secretly marrying the son of her family's most hated enemy. At times, she was happy, and at times, she was afraid. David Taylor played Romeo, Montague's son. He put on a good performance despite having a head cold. His lines were said with great feeling in a clear voice. Eric Parker was the perfect Tybalt, dark and angry. Maggie Jones played the nurse. She acted the part of a gossipy old woman very well. She made everyone in the audience laugh at her jokes and her comic character. The whole cast showed enthusiasm in every scene. The actors knew the meaning of their lines. They used body language to show this meaning well. The stage lights were sometimes too bright or too dim, but the sword fights looked very real and the costumes were wonderful. Overall, St. Stephen's production of Romeo and Juliet was a great night of high school theater. Art and Culture Unit 11. On Stage. Love, Hate, Death. These things are at the heart of Shakespeare's famous tragedy, Romeo and Juliet. The St. Stephen's High School Drama Club performed this play last weekend. Romeo and Juliet is the story of two families, the Capulets and the Montagues, who are bitter enemies. Tragedy follows when the son of one falls in love with the daughter of the other. The play is set in Verona, Italy, in the late 16th century. Alison Bourne played Juliet, Capulet's beautiful young daughter. She showed the mixed emotions Juliet felt after secretly marrying the son of her family's most hated enemy. At times, she was happy, and at times, she was afraid. David Taylor played Romeo, Montague's son. He put on a good performance despite having a head cold. His lines were said with great feeling in a clear voice. Eric Parker was the perfect Tybalt, dark and angry. Maggie Jones played the nurse. She acted the part of a gossipy old woman very well. She made everyone in the audience laugh at her jokes and her comic character. The whole cast showed enthusiasm in every scene. The actors knew the meaning of their lines. They used body language to show this meaning well. The stage lights were sometimes too bright or too dim, but the sword fights looked very real and the costumes were wonderful. Overall, St. Stephen's production of Romeo and Juliet was a great night of high school theater. Art and Culture Unit 11. On Stage. Love, Hate, Death. These things are at the heart of Shakespeare's famous tragedy, Romeo and Juliet. The St. Stephen's High School Drama Club performed this play last weekend. Romeo and Juliet is the story of two families, the Capulets and the Montagues, who are bitter enemies. Tragedy follows when the son of one falls in love with the daughter of the other. The play is set in Verona, Italy, in the late 16th century. Alison Bourne played Juliet, Capulet's beautiful young daughter. She showed the mixed emotions Juliet felt after secretly marrying the son of her family's most hated enemy. At times, she was happy, and at times, she was afraid. David Taylor played Romeo, Montague's son. He put on a good performance despite having a head cold. His lines were said with great feeling in a clear voice. Eric Parker was the perfect Tybalt, dark and angry. Maggie Jones played the nurse. 
She acted the part of a gossipy old woman very well. She made everyone in the audience laugh at her jokes and her comic character. The whole cast showed enthusiasm in every scene. The actors knew the meaning of their lines. They used body language to show this meaning well. The stage lights were sometimes too bright or too dim, but the sword fights looked very real and the costumes were wonderful. Overall, St. Stephen's production of Romeo and Juliet was a great night of high school theater. Art and Culture Unit 11 On Stage Love, Hate, Death These things are at the heart of Shakespeare's famous tragedy, Romeo and Juliet. The St. Stephen's High School Drama Club performed this play last weekend. Romeo and Juliet is the story of two families, the Capulets and the Montagues, who are bitter enemies. Tragedy follows when the son of one falls in love with the daughter of the other. The play is set in Verona, Italy, in the late 16th century. Alison Bourne played Juliet, Capulet's beautiful young daughter. She showed the mixed emotions Juliet felt after secretly marrying the son of her family's most hated enemy. At times, she was happy, and at times, she was afraid. David Taylor played Romeo, Montague's son. He put on a good performance despite having a head cold. His lines were said with great feeling in a clear voice. Eric Parker was the perfect Tybalt, dark and angry. Maggie Jones played the nurse. She acted the part of a gossipy old woman very well. She made everyone in the audience laugh at her jokes and her comic character. The whole cast showed enthusiasm in every scene. The actors knew the meaning of their lines. They used body language to show this meaning well. The stage lights were sometimes too bright or too dim, but the sword fights looked very real and the costumes were wonderful. Overall, St. Stephen's production of Romeo and Juliet was a great night of high school theater. Art and Culture Unit 11 On Stage Love, Hate, Death These things are at the heart of Shakespeare's famous tragedy, Romeo and Juliet. The St. Stephen's High School Drama Club performed this play last weekend. Romeo and Juliet is the story of two families, the Capulets and the Montagues, who are bitter enemies. Tragedy follows when the son of one falls in love with the daughter of the other. The play is set in Verona, Italy, in the late 16th century. Alison Bourne played Juliet, Capulet's beautiful young daughter. She showed the mixed emotions Juliet felt after secretly marrying the son of her family's most hated enemy. At times, she was happy, and at times, she was afraid. David Taylor played Romeo, Montague's son. He put on a good performance despite having a head cold. His lines were said with great feeling in a clear voice. Eric Parker was the perfect Tybalt, dark and angry. Maggie Jones played the nurse. She acted the part of a gossipy old woman very well. She made everyone in the audience laugh at her jokes and her comic character. The whole cast showed enthusiasm in every scene. The actors knew the meaning of their lines. They used body language to show this meaning well. The stage lights were sometimes too bright or too dim, but the sword fights looked very real and the costumes were wonderful. Overall, St. Stephen's production of Romeo and Juliet was a great night of high school theater. Unit 12. A Famous Portrait The Mona Lisa is one of the most famous paintings in the world. It was painted by the great Italian artist Leonardo da Vinci between the years 1503 and 1505. The portrait was done with oil paint on a simple piece of wood. The portrait shows a woman in front of a landscape with mountains. Many people believe that the model for the painting was the wife of an important man in the area. However, some people now think that da Vinci actually drew a picture of himself. 
they say the face looks similar to his. Apparently, da Vinci loved the painting so much that he carried it with him at all times until he sold it to the King of France. The portrait is famous for several reasons. The best known reason is for Mona Lisa's unusual smile. It is difficult to say if she is being pleasant or looking arrogant. Another reason the painting is famous is that it was stolen from an art museum in 1911. Both France and Italy sent people to look for the lost painting. It was then found two years later in a hotel in France. It is currently on display at the Louvre Museum in Paris. People from all over the world go to the museum each year to see the Mona Lisa. In fact, the painting has so much appeal today that it has been copied many times. Unit 12 A Famous Portrait The Mona Lisa is one of the most famous paintings in the world. It was painted by the great Italian artist Leonardo da Vinci between the years 1503 and 1505. The portrait was done with oil paint on a simple piece of wood. The portrait shows a woman in front of a landscape with mountains. Many people believe that the model for the painting was the wife of an important man in the area. However, some people now think that da Vinci actually drew a picture of himself. They say the face looks similar to his. Apparently, da Vinci loved the painting so much that he carried it with him at all times until he sold it to the King of France. The portrait is famous for several reasons. The best known reason is for Mona Lisa's unusual smile. It is difficult to say if she is being pleasant or looking arrogant. Another reason the painting is famous is that it was stolen from an art museum in 1911. Both France and Italy sent people to look for the lost painting. It was then found two years later in a hotel in France. It is currently on display at the Louvre Museum in Paris. People from all over the world go to the museum each year to see the Mona Lisa. In fact, the painting has so much appeal today that it has been copied many times. Unit 12 A Famous Portrait The Mona Lisa is one of the most famous paintings in the world. It was painted by the great Italian artist Leonardo da Vinci between the years 1503 and 1505. The portrait was done with oil paint on a simple piece of wood. The portrait shows a woman in front of a landscape with mountains. Many people believe that the model for the painting was the wife of an important man in the area. However, some people now think that da Vinci actually drew a picture of himself. They say the face looks similar to his. Apparently, da Vinci loved the painting so much that he carried it with him at all times until he sold it to the King of France. The portrait is famous for several reasons. The best known reason is for Mona Lisa's unusual smile. It is difficult to say if she is being pleasant or looking arrogant. Another reason the painting is famous is that it was stolen from an art museum in 1911. Both France and Italy sent people to look for the lost painting. It was then found two years later in a hotel in France. It is currently on display at the Louvre Museum in Paris. People from all over the world go to the museum each year to see the Mona Lisa. In fact, the painting has so much appeal today that it has been copied many times. Unit 12 A Famous Portrait The Mona Lisa is one of the most famous paintings in the world. It was painted by the great Italian artist Leonardo da Vinci between the years 1503 and 1505. The portrait was done with oil paint on a simple piece of wood. The portrait shows a woman in front of a landscape with mountains. Many people believe that the model for the painting was the wife of an important man in the area. 
However, some people now think that da Vinci actually drew a picture of himself. They say the face looks similar to his. Apparently, da Vinci loved the painting so much that he carried it with him at all times until he sold it to the King of France. The portrait is famous for several reasons. The best known reason is for Mona Lisa's unusual smile. It is difficult to say if she is being pleasant or looking arrogant. Another reason the painting is famous is that it was stolen from an art museum in 1911. Both France and Italy sent people to look for the lost painting. It was then found two years later in a hotel in France. It is currently on display at the Louvre Museum in Paris. People from all over the world go to the museum each year to see the Mona Lisa. In fact, the painting has so much appeal today that it has been copied many times. Unit 12 A Famous Portrait The Mona Lisa is one of the most famous paintings in the world. It was painted by the great Italian artist Leonardo da Vinci between the years 1503 and 1505. The portrait was done with oil paint on a simple piece of wood. The portrait shows a woman in front of a landscape with mountains. Many people believe that the model for the painting was the wife of an important man in the area. However, some people now think that da Vinci actually drew a picture of himself. They say the face looks similar to his. Apparently, da Vinci loved the painting so much that he carried it with him at all times until he sold it to the King of France. The portrait is famous for several reasons. The best known reason is for Mona Lisa's unusual smile. It is difficult to say if she is being pleasant or looking arrogant. Another reason the painting is famous is that it was stolen from an art museum in 1911. Both France and Italy sent people to look for the lost painting. It was then found two years later in a hotel in France. It is currently on display at the Louvre Museum in Paris. People from all over the world go to the museum each year to see the Mona Lisa. In fact, the painting has so much appeal today that it has been copied many times. Unit 13. Leonardo da Vinci When most people hear the name Leonardo da Vinci, they think of art. But in fact, he was a man of many talents. He was a scientist, an inventor, and an artist. Leonardo da Vinci was born in 1452 in Vinci, Italy. When he was 14, his father sent him to Florence to train under Andrea del Verrocchio, one of the best artists in the area. Leonardo became better than Verrocchio. By his early twenties, Leonardo was famous for his painting. He was especially good at painting colors and details. This made his paintings very lifelike. His most famous paintings are the Mona Lisa and the Last Supper. Leonardo was also a great scientist. He was a good observer of life and nature. He would ask himself simple questions like, how do birds fly? Then he would try to find the answers. He was interested in everything. For example, he studied the inner workings of the human body. He would cut up dead bodies to examine their insides. Leonardo was also a talented inventor. He believed that by understanding how each part of a machine worked, the parts could be changed and combined in different ways to make new machines. Using his artistic talent, Leonardo drew pictures of many inventions. However, few of them were built and tested during his lifetime. For example, his parachute wasn't built until 1783. Also, his war tank wasn't used until World War I in 1917. Unit 13 Leonardo da Vinci When most people hear the name Leonardo da Vinci, they think of art. But in fact, he was a man of many talents. He was a scientist, an inventor, and an artist. Leonardo da Vinci was born in 1452 in Vinci, Italy. 
When he was fourteen, his father sent him to Florence to train under Andrea del Verrocchio, one of the best artists in the area. Leonardo became better than Verrocchio. By his early twenties, Leonardo was famous for his painting. He was especially good at painting colors and details. This made his paintings very lifelike. His most famous paintings are the Mona Lisa and the Last Supper. Leonardo was also a great scientist. He was a good observer of life and nature. He would ask himself simple questions like, "How do birds fly?" Then he would try to find the answers. He was interested in everything. For example, he studied the inner workings of the human body. He would cut up dead bodies to examine their insides. Leonardo was also a talented inventor. He believed that by understanding how each part of a machine worked, the parts could be changed and combined in different ways to make new machines. Using his artistic talent, Leonardo drew pictures of many inventions. However, few of them were built and tested during his lifetime. For example, his parachute wasn't built until 1783. Also, his war tank wasn't used until World War I in 1917. Unit Thirteen, Leonardo da Vinci. When most people hear the name Leonardo da Vinci, they think of art, but in fact he was a man of many talents. He was a scientist, an inventor, and an artist. Leonardo da Vinci was born in 1452 in Vinci, Italy. When he was 14, his father sent him to Florence to train under Andrea del Verrocchio, one of the best artists in the area. Leonardo became better than Verrocchio. By his early twenties, Leonardo was famous for his painting. He was especially good at painting colors and details. This made his paintings very lifelike. His most famous paintings are the Mona Lisa and the Last Supper. Leonardo was also a great scientist. He was a good observer of life and nature. He would ask himself simple questions like, "How do birds fly?" Then he would try to find the answers. He was interested in everything. For example, he studied the inner workings of the human body. He would cut up dead bodies to examine their insides. Leonardo was also a talented inventor. He believed that by understanding how each part of a machine worked, the parts could be changed and combined in different ways to make new machines. Using his artistic talent. Leonardo drew pictures of many inventions. However, few of them were built and tested during his lifetime. For example, his parachute wasn't built until 1783. Also, his war tank wasn't used until World War I in 1917. Unit 13, Leonardo da Vinci. When most people hear the name Leonardo da Vinci, they think of art. But in fact, he was a man of many talents. He was a scientist, an inventor, and an artist. Leonardo da Vinci was born in 1452 in Vinci, Italy. When he was 14, his father sent him to Florence to train under Andrea del Verrocchio, one of the best artists in the area. Leonardo became better than Verrocchio. By his early 20s, Leonardo was famous for his painting. He was especially good at painting colors and details. This made his paintings very lifelike. His most famous paintings are the Mona Lisa and the Last Supper. Leonardo was also a great scientist. He was a good observer of life and nature. He would ask himself simple questions like, "How do birds fly?" Then he would try to find the answers. He was interested in everything. For example. He studied the inner workings of the human body. He would cut up dead bodies to examine their insides. Leonardo was also a talented inventor. He believed that by understanding how each part of a machine worked, the parts could be changed and combined in different ways to make new machines. Using his artistic talent, Leonardo drew pictures of many inventions. However, few of them were built and tested during his lifetime. For example, his parachute wasn't built until 1783. Also, 
His war tank wasn't used until World War I in 1917. Unit 13. Leonardo da Vinci When most people hear the name Leonardo da Vinci, they think of art. But in fact, he was a man of many talents. He was a scientist, an inventor, and an artist. Leonardo da Vinci was born in 1452 in Vinci, Italy. When he was 14, his father sent him to Florence to train under Andrea del Verrocchio, one of the best artists in the area. Leonardo became better than Verrocchio. By his early 20s, Leonardo was famous for his painting. He was especially good at painting colors and details. This made his paintings very lifelike. His most famous paintings are the Mona Lisa and the Last Supper. Leonardo was also a great scientist. He was a good observer of life and nature. He would ask himself simple questions like, How do birds fly? Then he would try to find the answers. He was interested in everything. For example, he studied the inner workings of the human body. He would cut up dead bodies to examine their insides. Leonardo was also a talented inventor. He believed that by understanding how each part of a machine worked, the parts could be changed and combined in different ways to make new machines. Using his artistic talent, Leonardo drew pictures of many inventions. However, few of them were built and tested during his lifetime. For example, his parachute wasn't built until 1783. Also, his war tank wasn't used until World War I in 1917. Unit 14. Ludwig van Beethoven Ludwig van Beethoven was a musical genius. He composed hundreds of songs in his lifetime. The first four notes of his fifth symphony, bum 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 bum, are the most famous in the world. These notes are played on a trombone. Beethoven was the first composer to use trombones in a symphony. A symphony is a very complex and beautiful song. Beethoven wrote nine symphonies in all. He said that he first composed symphonies in his head. He heard the part for every instrument in his mind before he wrote the first note on paper. Beethoven was born in 1770 in Bonn, Germany. His birthday was probably in December. Nobody is sure. He gave his first public performance at age 7. He wrote his first composition before he was 12. Sadly, at the age of 28, he started to go deaf. But he continued to compose music and to lead the orchestra. He never got married. After his death in 1827, friends found love letters that he had written to someone he called Immortal Beloved. To be immortal means to live forever. Beloved is a way of saying you love someone. His lover's name still remains a mystery. For these reasons, and because of his wonderful music, he is remembered as a remarkable man in history. Perhaps no other composer has had such a large effect on the history of Western music as Beethoven. Unit 14. Ludwig van Beethoven Ludwig van Beethoven was a musical genius. He composed hundreds of songs in his lifetime. The first four notes of his fifth symphony, bum 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 bum, are the most famous in the world. These notes are played on a trombone. Beethoven was the first composer to use trombones in a symphony. A symphony is a very complex and beautiful song. Beethoven wrote nine symphonies in all. He said that he first composed symphonies in his head. He heard the part for every instrument in his mind before he wrote the first note on paper. Beethoven was born in 1770 in Bonn, Germany. His birthday was probably in December. Nobody is sure. He gave his first public performance at age 7. He wrote his first composition before he was 12. Sadly, at the age of 28, he started to go deaf but he continued to compose music and to lead the orchestra. He never got married. After his death in 1827, friends found love letters that he had written to someone he called Immortal Beloved. To be immortal 
means to live forever. Beloved is a way of saying you love someone. His lover's name still remains a mystery. For these reasons and because of his wonderful music, he is remembered as a remarkable man in history. Perhaps no other composer has had such a large effect on the history of Western music as Beethoven. Unit 14. Ludwig van Beethoven. Ludwig van Beethoven was a musical genius. He composed hundreds of songs in his lifetime. The first four notes of his fifth symphony, bum 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 bum, are the most famous in the world. These notes are played on a trombone. Beethoven was the first composer to use trombones in a symphony. A symphony is a very complex and beautiful song. Beethoven wrote nine symphonies in all. He said that he first composed symphonies in his head. He heard the part for every instrument in his mind before he wrote the first note on paper. Beethoven was born in 1770 in Bonn, Germany. His birthday was probably in December. Nobody is sure. He gave his first public performance at age seven. He wrote his first composition before he was 12. Sadly, at the age of 28, he started to go deaf. But he continued to compose music and to lead the orchestra. He never got married. After his death in 1827, friends found love letters that he had written to someone he called Immortal Beloved. To be immortal means to live forever. Beloved is a way of saying you love someone. His lover's name still remains a mystery. For these reasons, and because of his wonderful music, he is remembered as a remarkable man in history. Perhaps no other composer has had such a large effect on the history of Western music as Beethoven. Unit 14. Ludwig van Beethoven Ludwig van Beethoven was a musical genius. He composed hundreds of songs in his lifetime. The first four notes of his fifth symphony, bum 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 bum, are the most famous in the world. These notes are played on a trombone. Beethoven was the first composer to use trombones in a symphony. A symphony is a very complex and beautiful song. Beethoven wrote nine symphonies in all. He said that he first composed symphonies in his head. He heard the part for every instrument in his mind before he wrote the first note on paper. Beethoven was born in 1770 in Bonn, Germany. His birthday was probably in December. Nobody is sure. He gave his first public performance at age 7. He wrote his first composition before he was 12. Sadly, at the age of 28, he started to go deaf but he continued to compose music and to lead the orchestra. He never got married. After his death in 1827, friends found love letters that he had written to someone he called Immortal Beloved. To be immortal means to live forever. Beloved is a way of saying you love someone. His lover's name still remains a mystery. For these reasons and because of his wonderful music, he is remembered as a remarkable man in history. Perhaps no other composer has had such a large effect on the history of Western music as Beethoven. Unit 14. Ludwig van Beethoven Ludwig van Beethoven was a musical genius. He composed hundreds of songs in his lifetime. The first four notes of his fifth symphony, bum 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 bum, are the most famous in the world. These notes are played on a trombone. Beethoven was the first composer to use trombones in a symphony. A symphony is a very complex and beautiful song. Beethoven wrote nine symphonies in all. He said that he first composed symphonies in his head. He heard the part for every instrument in his mind before he wrote the first note on paper. Beethoven was born in 1770 in Bonn, Germany. His birthday was probably in December. Nobody is sure. He gave his first public performance at age 7. He wrote his first composition before he was 12. Sadly, at the age of 28, he started to go deaf. 
but he continued to compose music and to lead the orchestra. He never got married. After his death in 1827, friends found love letters that he had written to someone he called Immortal Beloved. To be immortal means to live forever. Beloved is a way of saying you love someone. His lover's name still remains a mystery. For these reasons and because of his wonderful music, he is remembered as a remarkable man in history. Perhaps no other composer has had such a large effect on the history of Western music as Beethoven. Unit 15. A Nice Gift We've been invited to Lisa and Tom's wedding in August, so we need to get them a present. Do you have any ideas about what to buy them? I don't know. I'm not very good at buying gifts for people. What do you usually buy people for wedding gifts? I'd like to buy something that they have especially asked for. Most couples who are getting married go to several department stores and make a list of what they would like, and the stores put the list into a computer system. Then you can go and print out the list and choose something that they would like. Are Lisa and Tom registered somewhere? Yes, they are registered at two department stores. I've already printed out their list from one store. What have they asked for? Well, they have asked for different things for their new house. They would like towels, linens, decorations for the house, small appliances for the kitchen, china, silverware, crystal glasses, garden tools, and a patio set. Wow, that's a lot of stuff. How should we decide what to get them? They have listed a coffee maker as one of the things they want, so why don't we buy them a nice coffee maker? Okay. How much is it? It's $40. Maybe we could get them some nice coffee cups and some coffee to go with it. That's a great idea. I think that will make a lovely wedding present. Unit 15. A nice gift. We've been invited to Lisa and Tom's wedding in August, so we need to get them a present. Do you have any ideas about what to buy them? I don't know. I'm not very good at buying gifts for people. What do you usually buy people for wedding gifts? I'd like to buy something that they have especially asked for. Most couples who are getting married go to several department stores and make a list of what they would like, and the stores put the list into a computer system. Then you can go and print out the list and choose something that they would like. Are Lisa and Tom registered somewhere? Yes, they are registered at two department stores. I've already printed out their list from one store. What have they asked for? Well, they have asked for different things for their new house. They would like towels, linens, decorations for the house, small appliances for the kitchen, china, silverware, crystal glasses, garden tools, and a patio set. Wow, that's a lot of stuff. How should we decide what to get them? They have listed a coffee maker as one of the things they want, so why don't we buy them a nice coffee maker? Okay, how much is it? It's $40. Maybe we could get them some nice coffee cups and some coffee to go with it. That's a great idea. I think that will make a lovely wedding present. Unit 15 a nice gift. We've been invited to Lisa and Tom's wedding in August, so we need to get them a present. Do you have any ideas about what to buy them? I don't know. I'm not very good at buying gifts for people. What do you usually buy people for wedding gifts? I'd like to buy something that they have especially asked for. Most couples who are getting married go to several department stores and make a list of what they would like and the stores put the list into a computer system. Then you can go and print out the list and choose something that they would like. Are Lisa and Tom registered somewhere? Yes, they are registered at two department stores. I've already printed out their list from one store. What have they asked for? Well, they have asked for different things for their new house. They would like towels, linens, decorations for the house, small appliances for the kitchen, china, silverware, crystal glasses, garden tools, and a patio set. Wow, that's a lot of stuff. How should we decide what to get them? They have listed a coffee maker as one of the things they want, so why don't we buy them a nice coffee maker? Okay, how much is it? 
It's forty dollars. Maybe we could get them some nice coffee cups and some coffee to go with it. That's a great idea. I think that will make a lovely wedding present. Unit fifteen. A nice gift. We've been invited to Lisa and Tom's wedding in August, so we need to get them a present. Do you have any ideas about what to buy them? I don't know. I'm not very good at buying gifts for people. What do you usually buy people for wedding gifts? I'd like to buy something that they have especially asked for. Most couples who are getting married go to several department stores and make a list of what they would like, and the stores put the list into a computer system. Then you can go and print out the list and choose something that they would like. Are Lisa and Tom registered somewhere? Yes, they are registered at two department stores. I've already printed out their list from one store. What have they asked for? Well, they have asked for different things for their new house. They would like towels, linens, decorations for the house, small appliances for the kitchen, china, silverware, crystal glasses, garden tools, and a patio set. Wow, that's a lot of stuff. How should we decide what to get them? They have listed a coffee maker as one of the things they want. So why don't we buy them a nice coffee maker? Okay. How much is it? It's forty dollars. Maybe we could get them some nice coffee cups and some coffee to go with it. That's a great idea. I think that will make a lovely wedding present. Unit fifteen. A nice gift. We've been invited to Lisa and Tom's wedding in August, so we need to get them a present. Do you have any ideas about what to buy them? I don't know. I'm not very good at buying gifts for people. What do you usually buy people for wedding gifts? I'd like to buy something that they have especially asked for. Most couples who are getting married go to several department stores and make a list of what they would like, and the stores put the list into a computer system. Then you can go and print out the list and choose something that they would like. Are Lisa and Tom registered somewhere? Yes, they are registered at two department stores. I've already printed out their list from one store. What have they asked for? Well, they have asked for different things for their new house. They would like towels, linens, decorations for the house, small appliances for the kitchen, china, silverware, crystal glasses, garden tools. And a patio set. Wow, that's a lot of stuff. How should we decide what to get them? They have listed a coffee maker as one of the things they want. So why don't we buy them a nice coffee maker? Okay. How much is it? It's forty dollars. Maybe we could get them some nice coffee cups and some coffee to go with it. That's a great idea. I think that will make a lovely wedding present. Leisure and entertainment. Unit sixteen, collecting stamps. Hello, everyone. My name is Franklin. I'm the president of the Greenville Stamp Collecting Club. Many people ask me why stamp collecting is such a popular hobby. There are several reasons. First, stamp collecting is inexpensive. Most letters come with stamps on them. All you need to do is remove the stamp from the envelope. It's true that nowadays we may not get as many letters as we used to. In that case, you might want to buy your first set of stamps. Stamp dealers often sell a lot of stamps for only three dollars. Second, stamp collecting is educational. Stamps have pictures of everything from world leaders to endangered animals to various sports. It is interesting to learn about the people and things that are pictured on the stamps. It's much more exciting than reading a boring history book. Also, stamp collecting can help build friendships between people from around the world. Stamp collectors in India, for example, can build stamp trading friendships with people from Mexico. They can learn about each other's culture while they exchange stamps. Finally, collecting stamps is something that families can do together. Parents and children can spend time enjoying the same hobby. And build a closer relationship instead of sitting in front of the television each night. So there you have four good reasons why stamp collecting is the world's number one hobby. I hope you have enjoyed my talk. There are refreshments in the lobby. Thank you. 
Leisure and Entertainment. Unit 16. Collecting Stamps. Hello, everyone. My name is Franklin. I'm the president of the Greenville Stamp Collecting Club. Many people ask me why stamp collecting is such a popular hobby. There are several reasons. First, stamp collecting is inexpensive. Most letters come with stamps on them. All you need to do is remove the stamp from the envelope. It's true that nowadays we may not get as many letters as we used to. In that case, you might want to buy your first set of stamps. Stamp dealers often sell a lot of stamps for only $3. Second, stamp collecting is educational. Stamps have pictures of everything from world leaders to endangered animals to various sports. It is interesting to learn about the people and things that are pictured on the stamps. It's much more exciting than reading a boring history book. Also, stamp collecting can help build friendships between people from around the world. Stamp collectors in India, for example, can build stamp trading friendships with people from Mexico. They can learn about each other's culture while they exchange stamps. Finally, collecting stamps is something that families can do together. Parents and children can spend time enjoying the same hobby and build a closer relationship, instead of sitting in front of the television each night. So there you have four good reasons why stamp collecting is the world's number one hobby. I hope you have enjoyed my talk. There are refreshments in the lobby. Thank you. Leisure and Entertainment Unit 16 Collecting Stamps Hello everyone, my name is Franklin. I'm the president of the Greenville Stamp Collecting Club. Many people ask me why stamp collecting is such a popular hobby. There are several reasons. First, stamp collecting is inexpensive. Most letters come with stamps on them. All you need to do is remove the stamp from the envelope. It's true that nowadays we may not get as many letters as we used to. In that case, you might want to buy your first set of stamps. Stamp dealers often sell a lot of stamps for only $3. Second, stamp collecting is educational. Stamps have pictures of everything from world leaders to endangered animals to various sports. It is interesting to learn about the people and things that are pictured on the stamps. It's much more exciting than reading a boring history book. Also, stamp collecting can help build friendships between people from around the world. Stamp collectors in India, for example, can build stamp trading friendships with people from Mexico. They can learn about each other's culture while they exchange stamps. Finally, collecting stamps is something that families can do together. Parents and children can spend time enjoying the same hobby and build a closer relationship, instead of sitting in front of the television each night. So there you have four good reasons why stamp collecting is the world's number one hobby. I hope you have enjoyed my talk. There are refreshments in the lobby. Thank you. Leisure and Entertainment Unit 16. Collecting Stamps Hello everyone, my name is Franklin. I'm the president of the Greenville Stamp Collecting Club. Many people ask me why stamp collecting is such a popular hobby. There are several reasons. First, stamp collecting is inexpensive. Most letters come with stamps on them. All you need to do is remove the stamp from the envelope. It's true that nowadays we may not get as many letters as we used to. In that case, you might want to buy your first set of stamps. Stamp dealers often sell a lot of stamps for only $3. Second, stamp collecting is educational. Stamps have pictures of everything from world leaders to endangered animals to various sports. It is interesting to learn about the people and things that are pictured on the stamps. It's much more exciting than reading a boring history book. Also, stamp collecting can help build friendships between people from around the world. Stamp collectors in India, for example, can build stamp trading friendships with people from Mexico. They can learn about each other's culture while they exchange stamps. Finally, collecting stamps is something that families can do together. 
parents and children can spend time enjoying the same hobby and build a closer relationship instead of sitting in front of the television each night. So there you have four good reasons why stamp collecting is the world's number one hobby. I hope you have enjoyed my talk. There are refreshments in the lobby. Thank you. Leisure and Entertainment Unit 16 Collecting Stamps Hello everyone, my name is Franklin. I'm the president of the Greenville Stamp Collecting Club. Many people ask me why stamp collecting is such a popular hobby. There are several reasons. First, stamp collecting is inexpensive. Most letters come with stamps on them. All you need to do is remove the stamp from the envelope. It's true that nowadays we may not get as many letters as we used to. In that case, you might want to buy your first set of stamps. Stamp dealers often sell a lot of stamps for only $3. Second, stamp collecting is educational. Stamps have pictures of everything from world leaders to endangered animals to various sports. It is interesting to learn about the people and things that are pictured on the stamps. It's much more exciting than reading a boring history book. Also, stamp collecting can help build friendships between people from around the world. Stamp collectors in India, for example, can build stamp trading friendships with people from Mexico. They can learn about each other's culture while they exchange stamps. Finally, collecting stamps is something that families can do together. Parents and children can spend time enjoying the same hobby and build a closer relationship instead of sitting in front of the television each night. So there you have four good reasons why stamp collecting is the world's number one hobby. I hope you have enjoyed my talk. There are refreshments in the lobby. Thank you. Unit 17. Rock, Paper, Scissors Come on, Tony. Let's go to a movie tonight. We went to a movie on Saturday, Mary, but we haven't gone bowling for a long time. I know. Let's play rock, paper, scissors to decide. Rock, paper, scissors? It sounds like an interesting sort of game. How do you play it? First, we each make a fist with our right hand, and then we shake our fists at the same time. One, two, three. On the count of three, you can keep your hand in a fist. That's rock. Or open your hand with the palm flat. That's paper. Or keep your fist, but put out your first and middle fingers. That's scissors. The winner is the person who has the stronger item. That sounds stupid, because rocks are stronger than paper and scissors, so the rock will win every time. That's true in real life, Tony, but that's not how it works in this game. Rock can break scissors, but rock can be covered by paper, and paper can be cut by scissors. So rock defeats scissors. Paper beats rock, and scissors beats paper. It's interesting that each item in the game can defeat one other thing and lose to one other thing. I wonder who invented this game. I don't know, but it's played all over the world. There's even a rock, paper, scissors world championship that has been held every year in Europe since 1934. Unit 17. Rock, paper, scissors. Come on, Tony. Let's go to a movie tonight. We went to a movie on Saturday, Mary, but we haven't gone bowling for a long time. I know. Let's play rock, paper, scissors to decide. Rock, paper, scissors? It sounds like an interesting sort of game. How do you play it? First, we each make a fist with our right hand, and then we shake our fists at the same time. One, two, three. On the count of three, you can keep your hand in a fist. That's rock. Or open your hand with the palm flat. That's paper. Or keep your fist, but put out your first and middle fingers. That's scissors. The winner is the person who has the stronger item. That sounds stupid, because rocks are stronger than paper and scissors, so the rock will win every time. That's true in real life, Tony. But that's not how it works in this game. Rock can break scissors. But rock can be covered by paper, and paper can be cut by scissors. So rock defeats scissors. 
Paper beats rock and scissors beats paper. It's interesting that each item in the game can defeat one other thing and lose to one other thing. I wonder who invented this game. I don't know, but it's played all over the world. There's even a rock, paper, scissors world championship that has been held every year in Europe since 1934. Unit 17. Rock, paper, scissors. Come on, Tony. Let's go to a movie tonight. We went to a movie on Saturday, Mary, but we haven't gone bowling for a long time. I know. Let's play rock, paper, scissors to decide. Rock, paper, scissors? It sounds like an interesting sort of game. How do you play it? First, we each make a fist with our right hand, and then we shake our fists at the same time. One, two, three. On the count of three, you can keep your hand in a fist. That's rock. Or open your hand with the palm flat. That's paper. Or keep your fist, but put out your first and middle fingers. That's scissors. The winner is the person who has the stronger item. That sounds stupid, because rocks are stronger than paper and scissors, so the rock will win every time. That's true in real life, Tony, but that's not how it works in this game. Rock can break scissors, but rock can be covered by paper, and paper can be cut by scissors. So rock defeats scissors, paper beats rock, and scissors beats paper. It's interesting that each item in the game can defeat one other thing and lose to one other thing. I wonder who invented this game. I don't know, but it's played all over the world. There's even a rock, paper, scissors world championship that has been held every year in Europe since 1934. Unit 17. Rock, paper, scissors. Come on, Tony. Let's go to a movie tonight. We went to a movie on Saturday, Mary, but we haven't gone bowling for a long time. I know. Let's play rock, paper, scissors to decide. Rock, paper, scissors? It sounds like an interesting sort of game. How do you play it? First, we each make a fist with our right hand, and then we shake our fists at the same time. One, two, three. On the count of three, you can keep your hand in a fist. That's rock. Or open your hand with the palm flat. That's paper. Or keep your fist, but put out your first and middle fingers. That's scissors. The winner is the person who has the stronger item. That sounds stupid, because rocks are stronger than paper and scissors, so the rock will win every time. That's true in real life, Tony. But that's not how it works in this game. Rock can break scissors. But rock can be covered by paper, and paper can be cut by scissors. So rock defeats scissors, paper beats rock, and scissors beats paper. It's interesting that each item in the game can defeat one other thing and lose to one other thing. I wonder who invented this game. I don't know, but it's played all over the world. There's even a rock, paper, scissors world championship that has been held every year in Europe since 1934. Unit 17. Rock, paper, scissors. Come on, Tony. Let's go to a movie tonight. We went to a movie on Saturday, Mary, but we haven't gone bowling for a long time. I know. Let's play rock, paper, scissors to decide. Rock, paper, scissors? It sounds like an interesting sort of game. How do you play it? First, we each make a fist with our right hand, and then we shake our fists at the same time. One, two, three. On the count of three, you can keep your hand in a fist. That's rock. Or open your hand with the palm flat. That's paper. Or keep your fist, but put out your first and middle fingers. That's scissors. The winner is the person who has the stronger item. That sounds stupid, because rocks are stronger than paper and scissors, so the rock will win every time. That's true in real life, Tony, but that's not how it works in this game. Rock can break scissors, but rock can be covered by paper, and paper can be cut by scissors. So rock defeats scissors, paper beats rock, and scissors beats paper. It's interesting that each item in the game 
can defeat one other thing and lose to one other thing. I wonder who invented this game. I don't know, but it's played all over the world. There's even a rock, paper, scissors world championship that has been held every year in Europe since 1934. Unit 18. Man's Best Friend Why are dogs often called man's best friend? Probably because dogs have many of the qualities we want in our human companions. They are loyal, friendly, never argue, and are always glad to see us. This is one reason why we have dogs and other pets. Sometimes, we might even prefer the company of animals to that of fellow human beings. Pets provide us with many other benefits as well. Studies have shown that having a pet nearby lowers the blood pressure of elderly people and raises their spirits. One study in Britain showed that people with pets recovered more quickly from heart attacks than those who didn't have a pet. The study also found that pet owners suffered from fewer common ailments such as colds, headaches, and fevers than people who don't own pets. Pets help children to learn responsibility. By learning to take care of their pets, children learn how to take care of themselves and other people. Walking dogs each day gives children regular exercise. Pets can also help keep us safe. Dogs, for example, guard our homes and scare away burglars. Guide dogs help blind people see when they need to go outside. Cats catch mice and rats in our houses. Finally, pets teach us compassion. They give us a chance to show our love to other living creatures. If we can love our pets, it becomes easier to love each other. And that might be the most important benefit of all. Unit 18. Man's Best Friend Why are dogs often called man's best friend? Probably because dogs have many of the qualities we want in our human companions. They are loyal, friendly, never argue, and are always glad to see us. This is one reason why we have dogs and other pets. Sometimes, we might even prefer the company of animals to that of belly human beings. Pets provide us with many other benefits as well. Studies have shown that having a pet nearby lowers the blood pressure of elderly people and raises their spirits. One study in Britain showed that people with pets recovered more quickly from heart attacks than those who didn't have a pet. The study also found that pet owners suffered from fewer common ailments such as colds, headaches, and fevers than people who don't own pets. Pets help children to learn responsibility. By learning to take care of their pets, children learn how to take care of themselves and other people. Walking dogs each day gives children regular exercise. Pets can also help keep us safe. Dogs, for example, guard our homes and scare away burglars. Guide dogs help blind people see when they need to go outside. Cats catch mice and rats in our houses. Finally, pets teach us compassion. They give us a chance to show our love to other living creatures. If we can love our pets, it becomes easier to love each other. And that might be the most important benefit of all. Unit 18. Man's Best Friend Why are dogs often called man's best friend? Probably because dogs have many of the qualities we want in our human companions. They are loyal, friendly, never argue, and are always glad to see us. This is one reason why we have dogs and other pets. Sometimes, we might even prefer the company of animals to that of fellow human beings. Pets provide us with many other benefits as well. Studies have shown that having a pet nearby lowers the blood pressure of elderly people and raises their spirits. One study in Britain showed that people with pets recovered more quickly from heart attacks than those who didn't have a pet. The study also found that pet owners suffered from fewer common ailments such as colds, headaches, and fevers than people who don't own pets. 
Pets help children to learn responsibility. By learning to take care of their pets, children learn how to take care of themselves and other people. Walking dogs each day gives children regular exercise. Pets can also help keep us safe. Dogs, for example, guard our homes and scare away burglars. Guide dogs help blind people see when they need to go outside. Cats catch mice and rats in our houses. Finally, pets teach us compassion. They give us a chance to show our love to other living creatures. If we can love our pets, it becomes easier to love each other. And that might be the most important benefit of all. Unit 18. Man's Best Friend Why are dogs often called man's best friend? Probably because dogs have many of the qualities we want in our human companions. They are loyal, friendly, never argue, and are always glad to see us. This is one reason why we have dogs and other pets. Sometimes, we might even prefer the company of animals to that of fellow human beings. Pets provide us with many other benefits as well. Studies have shown that having a pet nearby lowers the blood pressure of elderly people and raises their spirits. One study in Britain showed that people with pets recovered more quickly from heart attacks than those who didn't have a pet. The study also found that pet owners suffered from fewer common ailments such as colds, headaches, and fevers than people who don't own pets. Pets help children to learn responsibility. By learning to take care of their pets, children learn how to take care of themselves and other people. Walking dogs each day gives children regular exercise. Pets can also help keep us safe. Dogs, for example, guard our homes and scare away burglars. Guide dogs help blind people see when they need to go outside. Cats catch mice and rats in our houses. Finally, pets teach us compassion. They give us a chance to show our love to other living creatures. If we can love our pets, it becomes easier to love each other. And that might be the most important benefit of all. Unit 18. Man's Best Friend Why are dogs often called man's best friend? Probably because dogs have many of the qualities we want in our human companions. They are loyal, friendly, never argue, and are always glad to see us. This is one reason why we have dogs and other pets. Sometimes, we might even prefer the company of animals to that of belly human beings. Pets provide us with many other benefits as well. Studies have shown that having a pet nearby lowers the blood pressure of elderly people and raises their spirits. One study in Britain showed that people with pets recovered more quickly from heart attacks than those who didn't have a pet. The study also found that pet owners suffered from fewer common ailments such as colds, headaches, and fevers than people who don't own pets. Pets help children to learn responsibility. By learning to take care of their pets, children learn how to take care of themselves and other people. Walking dogs each day gives children regular exercise. Pets can also help keep us safe. Dogs, for example, guard our homes and scare away burglars. Guide dogs help blind people see when they need to go outside. Cats catch mice and rats in our houses. Finally, pets teach us compassion. They give us a chance to show our love to other living creatures. If we can love our pets, it becomes easier to love each other. And that might be the most important benefit of all. Unit 19. The Active Leisure Center Bored with nothing to do? Come and check out the Active Leisure Center. We offer something for everyone. The center has a heated outdoor swimming pool with five different water slides for those who want some fun. There is also an indoor pool with lanes for more serious swimmers. Swimming lessons are available for all levels. The Active Leisure Center also has a fitness center for those who want to exercise. 
We have running machines, exercise bikes, weight machines, and free weights, and daily aerobics and jazz dance classes. Our fitness experts will be happy to provide you with a fitness program to suit your needs. The center has a sports hall where you can play indoor soccer, badminton, basketball, and various other sports. You can join community sports groups, sign up for tournaments, or just book the hall for you and your friends to use. With the school holidays coming soon, why not come and find out about our special holiday programs? We have programs for all ages, from kindergarten to high school students. And if you join now, you can even get a family discount. So come and take advantage of all that the Active Leisure Center has to offer. We're open from 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. on weekdays and 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. on weekends. For more information, call 325-6188 or visit our website at www.activeleisure.com. Unit 19, the Active Leisure Center. Bored with nothing to do? Come and check out the Active Leisure Center. We offer something for everyone. The center has a heated outdoor swimming pool with five different water slides for those who want some fun. There is also an indoor pool with lanes for more serious swimmers. Swimming lessons are available for all levels. The Active Leisure Center also has a fitness center for those who want to exercise. We have running machines, exercise bikes, weight machines, and free weights, and daily aerobics and jazz dance classes. Our fitness experts will be happy to provide you with a fitness program to suit your needs. The center has a sports hall where you can play indoor soccer, badminton, basketball, and various other sports. You can join community sports groups, sign up for tournaments, or just book the hall for you and your friends to use. With the school holidays coming soon, why not come and find out about our special holiday programs? We have programs for all ages, from kindergarten to high school students. And if you join now, you can even get a family discount. So come and take advantage of all that the Active Leisure Center has to offer. We're open from 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. on weekdays and 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. on weekends. For more information, call 325-6188 or visit our website at www.activeleisure.com. Unit 19, the Active Leisure Center. Bored with nothing to do? Come and check out the Active Leisure Center. We offer something for everyone. The center has a heated outdoor swimming pool with five different water slides for those who want some fun. There is also an indoor pool with lanes for more serious swimmers. Swimming lessons are available for all levels. The Active Leisure Center also has a fitness center for those who want to exercise. We have running machines, exercise bikes, weight machines, and free weights and daily aerobics and jazz dance classes. Our fitness experts will be happy to provide you with a fitness program to suit your needs. The center has a sports hall where you can play indoor soccer, badminton, basketball, and various other sports. You can join community sports groups, sign up for tournaments, or just book the hall for you and your friends to use. With the school holidays coming soon, why not come and find out about our special holiday programs? We have programs for all ages, from kindergarten to high school students. And if you join now, you can even get a family discount. So come and take advantage of all that the Active Leisure Center has to offer. We're open from 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. on weekdays and 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. on weekends. For more information, call 325-6188 or visit our website at www.activeleisure.com. Unit 19, the Active Leisure Center. Bored with nothing to do? Come and check out the Active Leisure Center. We offer something for everyone. The center has a heated outdoor swimming pool with five different water slides for those who want some fun. There is also an indoor pool with lanes for more serious swimmers. 
Swimming lessons are available for all levels. The Active Leisure Center also has a fitness center for those who want to exercise. We have running machines, exercise bikes, weight machines, and free weights, and daily aerobics and jazz dance classes. Our fitness experts will be happy to provide you with a fitness program to suit your needs. The center has a sports hall where you can play indoor soccer, badminton, basketball, and various other sports. You can join community sports groups, sign up for tournaments, or just book the hall for you and your friends to use. With the school holidays coming soon, why not come and find out about our special holiday programs? We have programs for all ages, from kindergarten to high school students. And if you join now, you can even get a family discount. So come and take advantage of all that the Active Leisure Center has to offer. We're open from 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. on weekdays and 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. on weekends. For more information, call 325-6188 or visit our website at www.activeleisure.com. Unit 19, the Active Leisure Center. Bored with nothing to do? Come and check out the Active Leisure Center. We offer something for everyone. The center has a heated outdoor swimming pool with five different water slides for those who want some fun. There is also an indoor pool with lanes for more serious swimmers. Swimming lessons are available for all levels. The Active Leisure Center also has a fitness center for those who want to exercise. We have running machines, exercise bikes, weight machines, and free weights, and daily aerobics and jazz dance classes. Our fitness experts will be happy to provide you with a fitness program to suit your needs. The center has a sports hall where you can play indoor soccer, badminton, basketball, and various other sports. You can join community sports groups, sign up for tournaments, or just book the hall for you and your friends to use. With the school holidays coming soon, why not come and find out about our special holiday programs? We have programs for all ages, from kindergarten to high school students. And if you join now, you can even get a family discount. So come and take advantage of all that the Active Leisure Center has to offer. We're open from 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. on weekdays and 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. on weekends. For more information, call 325-6188 or visit our website at www.activeleisure.com. Unit 20. The Audition Hi, Cindy. Are you ready for the big audition this afternoon? I don't know, Greg. I've been practicing the script all week, but the princess has so many lines that I don't know if I can remember them all. You don't have to remember all of them for the audition, just the lines for the main scene, where the pirate meets the princess and tries to kidnap her. I know, but even in that scene, the princess has quite a few lines. You've got to think positive and have some confidence in yourself. I think that you're going to get the part and that you'll be a fantastic princess. Well, I'm glad that somebody has confidence in me. I think I'm just worried that I'll forget my lines. By the way, which part are you going to try out for? I'm trying out for the part of the pirate, the one who tries to steal the princess away from the prince. Oh yeah, the pirate and the prince get to have that cool sword fight in the final scene, and then the prince kills the pirate with his own sword. Yeah, I remember reading that in the script. But at the audition today, we'll be practicing the scene where the pirate first sees the princess and falls in love with her. Hey, I'll help you practice your scene if you'll help me practice mine. You've got a deal. Let's start now. Unit 20, The Audition Hi, Cindy. Are you ready for the big audition this afternoon? I don't know, Greg. I've been practicing the script all week, but the princess has so many lines that I don't know if I can remember them all. You don't have to remember all of them for the audition, just the lines for the main scene, where the pirate meets the princess and tries to kidnap her. I know, but even in that scene, the princess has quite a few lines. 
You've got to think positive and have some confidence in yourself. I think that you're going to get the part and that you'll be a fantastic princess. Well, I'm glad that somebody has confidence in me. I think I'm just worried that I'll forget my lines. By the way, which part are you going to try out for? I'm trying out for the part of the pirate, the one who tries to steal the princess away from the prince. Oh, yeah, the pirate and the prince get to have that cool sword fight in the final scene, and then the prince kills the pirate with his own sword. Yeah, I remember reading that in the script. But at the audition today, we'll be practicing the scene where the pirate first sees the princess and falls in love with her. Hey, I'll help you practice your scene if you'll help me practice mine. You've got a deal. Let's start now. Unit 20 The Audition Hi, Cindy. Are you ready for the big audition this afternoon? I don't know, Greg. I've been practicing the script all week. But the princess has so many lines that I don't know if I can remember them all. You don't have to remember all of them for the audition, just the lines for the main scene, where the pirate meets the princess and tries to kidnap her. I know, but even in that scene, the princess has quite a few lines. You've got to think positive and have some confidence in yourself. I think that you're going to get the part and that you'll be a fantastic princess. Well, I'm glad that somebody has confidence in me. I think I'm just worried that I'll forget my lines. By the way, which part are you going to try out for? I'm trying out for the part of the pirate, the one who tries to steal the princess away from the prince. Oh, yeah, the pirate and the prince get to have that cool sword fight in the final scene, and then the prince kills the pirate with his own sword. Yeah, I remember reading that in the script. But at the audition today, we'll be practicing the scene where the pirate first sees the princess and falls in love with her. Hey, I'll help you practice your scene if you'll help me practice mine. You've got a deal. Let's start now. Unit 20. The Audition Hi, Cindy. Are you ready for the big audition this afternoon? I don't know, Greg. I've been practicing the script all week. But the princess has so many lines that I don't know if I can remember them all. You don't have to remember all of them for the audition, just the lines for the main scene, where the pirate meets the princess and tries to kidnap her. I know, but even in that scene, the princess has quite a few lines. You've got to think positive and have some confidence in yourself. I think that you're going to get the part and that you'll be a fantastic princess. Well, I'm glad that somebody has confidence in me. I think I'm just worried that I'll forget my lines. By the way, which part are you going to try out for? I'm trying out for the part of the pirate, the one who tries to steal the princess away from the prince. Oh, yeah, the pirate and the prince get to have that cool sword fight in the final scene, and then the prince kills the pirate with his own sword. Yeah, I remember reading that in the script. But at the audition today, we'll be practicing the scene where the pirate first sees the princess and falls in love with her. Hey, I'll help you practice your scene if you'll help me practice mine. You've got a deal. Let's start now. Unit 20. The Audition Hi, Cindy. Are you ready for the big audition this afternoon? I don't know, Greg. I've been practicing the script all week. But the princess has so many lines that I don't know if I can remember them all. You don't have to remember all of them for the audition, just the lines for the main scene, where the pirate meets the princess and tries to kidnap her. I know, but even in that scene, the princess has quite a few lines. You've got to think positive and have some confidence in yourself. I think that you're going to get the part and that you'll be a fantastic princess. Well, I'm glad that somebody has confidence in me. I think I'm just worried that I'll forget my lines. By the way, which part are you going to try out for? I'm trying out for the part of the pirate, the one who tries to steal the princess away from the prince. Oh, yeah, the pirate and the prince get to have that cool sword fight in the final scene, and then the prince kills the pirate with his own sword. Yeah, I remember reading that in the script. But at the audition today, 
we'll be practicing the scene where the pirate first sees the princess and falls in love with her. Hey, I'll help you practice your scene if you'll help me practice mine. You've got a deal. Let's start now.